Okay, so in this video we're going to do a relayed rates problem, and it's a problem about a cone, which is a very common type of relayed rates problem. Um, and let's take a look at it. So we have a water tank that has the shape of an inverted cone with base radius 3 meters and a height 5 meters. If water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of 3 cubic meters per minute, find the rate at which the water level is rising when the water is 3 meters deep. So relayed rates problems usually come down to um, understanding geometry, understanding if the rates that you're given are positive or negative, and then successfully taking a derivative. So let's see if we can do all those things. So first of all, an inverted cone uh, is kind of, that's my bad picture of an inverted cone for you. So um, it's like an upside down cone, which is still a cone, but we call it an inverted cone. Um, but really what's important about this is actually if we take a cross section of it, and actually only half of a cross section. So let me draw what I mean. So this is really what I mean. So this, it looks like it's actually going to turn into a right triangle problem again, which it kind of is. Um, so this, if I label it up, I know that um, from the problem, the radius of the base is 3, and the height is 5. So that means in this picture, this height right here is 5, and this is 3. So that's really important, but what's equally important to understand is, as you um, fill a cone with a water, or, or with a water, with a liquid or something like that, um, it creates another cone. So, uh, and if you want to think, just think about like an ice cream cone that's only partially full. So you still have a cone's worth of ice cream, just not a full cone. Um, so what happens is we actually have uh, here, so I, have, I think that's green and maybe red, um, or maybe maroon, I don't know what color that is. Um, we have another height and another radius. And so that's for the smaller uh, filled up portion of the cone. So what's nice about this is that those triangles are similar. So since they're similar, we can say that the radius of the big one over the height of the big one is equal to the radius of the smaller over the height of the smaller. Um, so we can set up this. R over H is equal to 3 over 5. So that's an equation that I'm going to save for a couple seconds, um, but I'm going to come back and use that at some point. So that's actually one of the key things to solving this particular problem is seeing that um, ratio. So volume of a cone, well, I know volume is one-third pi r squared and h. So I write that down. And then uh, let's see what the question is really asking us for. So water's going into the tank at 3 cubic meters per minute. So that's a volume type thing. So I know, dev and it's going in, so it's a positive rate of change. So dv dt is positive 3 and then meters cubed per minute. Um, what else do I know? I'm trying to find the rate at which the water level, so the water level is h in my picture and in the problem, is rising, so that's kind of a dh dt situation, and when the water is 3 meters deep. So um, I actually am looking for dh dt, and I'm looking for it um, at the exact moment that h is 3. So those are some things that I'll be able to plug in. So everything about the problem is kind of about H, right? And if I look at the volume formula, it has R and H in it. So I want to try to get rid of R because it's not really contributing to the problem. There's no questions about R. So I can do that if I go back to this relationship that I found, R over H equals 3 fifths. Um, I'm going to solve that for R. So that's R equals 3 fifths H. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute it into the volume formula which will create a formula that is only a function of height. So I'm replacing r with 3 fifths h, so it's going to be pi over 3, the quantity 3 fifths h squared, and then times h. And then I'm going to simplify this a little bit, so it's, you end up with 3 pi over 25, and then h cubed, so it's 3 pi over 25 because you really end up with 9 pi over um, 75, but you can simplify that, um, so I did. And uh, so that's about all I need at this point. I'm now, I'm looking for dh dt, so I need to take a derivative. So let's do that. dv dt is, so 3 pi over 25 is a coefficient. It's a constant multiple, so just keep that there. The derivative of h cubed with respect to t is going to be 3h squared and then times by the chain rule dh dt. So now I have um, a derivative dh dt showed up, and the idea here is to solve for dh dt. So what we're going to do is go to these things that we found. So we know dv dt is 3. We know h is also 3, which is kind of weird. Um, and so I'm going to just substitute in. So I get 3 is equal to, so 
uh, 3 times 3 pi over 25, so I'm combining that to get 9 pi over 25 here. Um, and then h, which is 3, so 3 squared is 9, and then dh dt. So we're basically done with the problem. So now I'm going to solve for dh dt. So dh dt ends up, uh, I'm going to go 75 pi over 81, just by simplifying that. Um, they have a common 3, so I'm going to actually simplify that more. So dh dt is 25 over 27 pi. But of course, you're not done until you have units. So for this, we're finding dh dt. So we want to figure out what units h had initially. So h was height. Um, we know 5 meters. So h is in meters. And then the unit of time is minutes. So it's going to be meters per minute. And uh, that's the answer. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.